for so I thought it would be a great opportunity for you to um to share this with our audience what what is what's the magic of the podcast uh and you know and maybe set the context a little bit of you know what you know what you found valuable and relate to and you know why you decided to introduce this to some of your clients but I think uh, you know you could do that for part of the onboarding and, and the idea here is that we're in the wild and we want to showcase who the, what the best users of the platform do um and so it's your time and you know uh, your chance to kind of tell the story of what you're doing and and share that with the community yeah uh, appreciate it so uh, as alex mentioned tom clements i'm the president of meridian software services but also the managing partner of meridian risk management which is an insurance brokerage firm uh in new york so we were an early adopter of relay to back in 2019 um and made the decision preemptively uh before the pandemic to try to transition to a more digital uh, and virtual agency uh specifically when it comes to the employee benefit programs and uh you know being a partner with relay to alex and the team helped propel our insurance agency uh, and we had significant growth uh, over the last sort of four years that we've been using the platform uh so much so that we uh, started a separate company, Meridian Software Services, to really sort of um, place relate to into other sort of peer groups, insurance brokerage firms, insurance carriers, general agents, uh, and we also uh, focus on real estate, higher education, and and have since pivoted into professional sports and collegiate athletics. Uh, but our expertise is really, uh, you know, from the insurance vertical side. So what I thought I would do today uh, is really just take you through a quick. Uh, sort of onboarding process um, that would be similar to what a new client of Relay2 uh, experiences when they're first sort of coming onto the platform. But before I dive into the sort of platform itself, I'll just explain, you know, at a very high level exactly what Relay2 does. And then I'll show you some examples of how we've used it and some of our sort of peer groups have used it to the benefit of their agency. Um, essentially, at its very sort of core base, relate to is a document experience platform. So what exactly does that mean? Um, essentially, you can take any static document. So think Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Publisher, really anything that you can convert to a PDF can now become a relate to uh, sort of platform document. And you can create interactive elements and embeddable assets into uh, that document essentially to make it come to life um, and sort of avoid uh, clutter of information and make it a very streamlined process. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen and just show you some examples um, of the platform itself. And then again, take you through um, a, a generalized onboarding sort of uh, presentation. So this is what the platform looks like. Um, when you onboard, essentially, you provide us with logo, color scheme, and everybody gets their own individualized dashboard. Initial setup, you would get two sort of profiles. You would get your core sort of corporate profile, which is where all of your company documents would live. And then you also get your own personal profile. So for the purposes of this presentation, we're just going to go into uh, the corporate profile. And so you can see here. These are some examples of documents that we've created um, in the past. So um, if we click into these documents and I'll once we've sort of gone through some of the basics here, I will take you through how to create these also. Um, but essentially, this is an example of a flipbook. So what you'll notice is we've added in a background video. Um, it automatically sort of uploads into a flipbook. And straight off the bat, you'll notice you're really going to operate off of these two buttons to start with. So edit mode and share mode. So share mode, for example, you have various different options there. You can one click. This is now going to be deliverable via email. You can get an embed code. Um, if you wanted to load it onto your website, you can simply copy, copy the link or you can post to various different social media profiles. One of the really nice pieces uh, about Relay2 um, is how you want the document to be viewed and if you want to gather data from the end user. So if we click on this, you'll notice there's five different settings that you can enable on each different sort of Relay2 presentation. 
uh, public, that would be searchable via Google. Um, if you want to use uh, SEO tags and things like that, um, you can embed those in the presentation and they will be Google searchable. You can have it unlisted. Essentially, what that means is anyone that you provide the link to can have access. Uh, you can require certain pieces of information uh, from the end viewer. So if I click on that, you'll see it gives me access. I can require an email, company name, full name, uh, authentication. Where this becomes really valuable is in a prospecting setting. Uh, so if you're sending out mass marketing campaigns, um, it will enable you to capture certain data uh, from those individuals. And this becomes very important when you're looking at it from an analytics perspective to drive business decisions. For extra security, you can enable it to be password protected, or you can make it extremely private and only viewable to certain email addresses. You can whitelist domains. So there's a ton of functionality uh, from a security setting. And so what you'll notice here with these top three sort of buttons um, is the analytics portion of it. So as I mentioned, you can start capturing data, but the overall document itself will also have certain uh, analytics available to it. So here's just a generalized overview, number of visits, page views, et cetera, by page, day, location, devices. So if you are using it for marketing and you're posting on you know, LinkedIn, Instagram ads, uh, generalized email, etc it's going to capture it here so you can essentially start making uh, business decisions on where your marketing dollars are spent who's referring that and if you capture data for people it will tell you specifically like that individual uh, the email address and you'll be able to click into their specific profile to see what they have viewed so again from a prospecting perspective this becomes important because you can see uh, what people are interested in what they're downloading, what links they're clicking, and you can start building out sort of potential customer profiles. And then when you're making additional outbound effort, either you know, email, email uh, telephonically, you'll already know what's of interest to them prior to making that call. Uh, from a benefits perspective, we use it a ton during the open enrollment period. And we actually go back at the end of that period with our clients and look through the data analytics dashboards because that helps us um, strategically decide which programs have worked, which programs we maybe want to spend a little bit more attention on or redevelop a completely customized uh, communication program because somebody spent money and launched an EAP this year uh, and very few people engaged in, in that slide or that educational material. Um, the client has obviously made an investment there, so we may want to pivot um, and do some education around that. Hey, and Tom, just on that note, um, maybe let's level set a little bit, you know, for who, for those folks that are kind of new to relate to, what are some of the reasons why folks you know, like yourself and some of your clients, let's say, let's pick the employee benefits kind of universe, right? Because everybody could relate to, um, you know, having to figure out what are the types of benefits that you need to protect yourself, to protect your family, and then as I like to put it, you kind of need to be some sort of a hybrid between, you know, a rocket scientist and a, uh, and a, and a legal, legal, legal eagle and uh, insurance expert to figure out what actually that all that means. And so that's sort of the complexity in that use case, there's all sorts of other complex content. So what's at stake, you know, for the clients um, like yourself, in your in your kind of life as a client and your current clients at like at getting this right in terms of the reading experience understanding yeah well as we all know insurance is complicated so so essentially the way that we've leveraged the platform is to try and streamline uh the education process as much as possible and allow for employees and dependents to self-serve their way to more information um, if I rewind to the early part of my career, you know, we would be on site at these organizations, would be shutting down business operations for you know, an hour at a time to try and educate the employee on their benefit options. And we would hand out you know, the insurance benefit summaries, 
open enrollment guides and it would just be kind of like a paper blizzard and there is uh, very little chance that you are going to be able to cover the full spectrum of the packet without overly file dumping on people um, and getting them to exactly what information may be rele relevant to them. So for example, they may have employees that a health savings account isn't applicable to, but in that traditional setting, you've got to go over what a health savings account is and you maybe spend five or 10 minutes there that isn't applicable to a subset of the population. So with relay to what we've been able to do is, is not only sort of reach into the full household where traditionally we were just focused on the employee and having them retell the story. Uh, we've also cut down and sort of this is the reason that some people buy relay to is the go green initiative. We no longer have the paper blizzard. It's all downloadable forms and links that people can self-serve their way to. We lower printing costs. We don't have to travel to these locations anymore. And what we found from analyzing the data analytics on the back end, um, we're able to gain access to, to, to more of the population that is an involved consumer in that purchasing sort of arrangement. And so... And for your clients, this is a big deal because for them, it's like their employees is the lifeblood of the organization. They want to make sure that they feel taken care of, appreciated, right? And understand what they're getting uh, through all this investment. Is that kind of their mindset as well? It, it, exactly. So yes, they're able to essentially condense a ton of complex in information into an easily digestible format. And so what I mean by that is we're essentially creating, you know, a, a PowerPoint presentation at the very base level converting it to a PDF, uploading it, but then we're able to embed other resources of information. So we've created separate programs for health savings account education, flexible spending account education, telemedicine, preventative care. So while that may import, be important to some people, not all, but instead of spending you know, uh, pages of information on explaining that, we just drop in a separate presentation that an employee can click into if they're interested in that specific topic. So it's enabled us to, to take a, what would have traditionally been a 40, 50 page open enrollment guide down to traditionally between uh, 10 to 20 slides, but then additional layering of assets, which are gonna educate that consumer on specific things that may be of interest to them. The second piece is we also do audio overlay on top of that. So they're getting the same experience that they would have in that live setting uh, through the Relay2 platform. Um, so we can easily you know, explain what the programs are, how they interact and help guide them to that correct sort of benefits decision. The, the nice thing about it is it's available 24 seven, uh, 365 as well. So what a lot of groups do is they post the URL into their HRIS system. If they get a question that comes in, from their employee on that, you know, they can redirect them to the HRIS site. Um, and that's going to provide them the, the same answer that that individual would have been able to provide them on the phone as well. So uh, it's kind of like training the employees to self serve themselves uh, through the educational process as well, and have, you know, real time access to information that they need at the time of service, for example, what are my prescription drug options? Um, how do I uh, uh, search for you know, a, a cost containment opportunity in a knee MRI? Um, how do I search for all the facilities that provide that and what the applicable cost would be? So you're putting the power back into the hand of the end consumer through real-time accessible information. Got it. That's beautiful. So bottom, bottom line is it, it basically democratizes access to this complex information without overwhelming people with too much information. And that, that allows your, your clients to, to reach their goals, right? The employees feel, you know, taken care of and that the, the, they're kind of being responded to their needs are being, their specific needs are being addressed. And it's yeah. how you're able to deliver the service more efficiently for your clients, because now, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're, 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 I, IP, so to speak, is in the setup, right? And kind of preparing and getting the data, optimizing this 
versus you know answering the same question 15 times right you know it was by by having kind of having that specifically available is that kind of a fair yeah exactly it's their journey not our journey right they need access to specific information that they want to consume not what's dictated to by us because traditionally we would have had to have told everybody about everything with this setup they can lead that conversation we're still providing the same tools resources and expertise but they're guiding what's important to them versus us trying to portray what should be important to them brilliant okay that's beautiful context thank thanks so much tom i i think there's just um i think even people that may not be thinking about exactly the same use case the sort of the movement of the world is to self-guided experience whether you're buying things or educating yourself in real time or you know protecting your family this is this is all the world is coming to and the more complex information the more choices there are the harder that kind of that journey could be right so that's sort of really exciting and before we dive into the creation component is there an example maybe of kind of what what one of your hubs looks like so people could understand yeah so you know this is an example of a, of a hub um and what what i would say just sort of back to the, the self-serve tool one of the really cool pieces uh to this and I'll, I'll just click into one um this one isn't specifically enabled but the the ai capability mm -hmm. um so what we're pivoting to as an agency now uh we get a lot of questions about uh you know general uh benefit questions what's the fertility coverage you know specifically to this plan and this plan and the traditional way we would have had to have answered that would have been to go into the specific insurance um certificate and uh that's time consuming you know control find is the traditional way that we would be able to do that mm -hmm. you know it's mentioned 15 times through the document so we've now got to go trawling through you know, 140 page uh, specific uh, document to try and search for that answer. So one of the, the nice things about relate to is, and this is just an example of, of what an open enrollment presentation looks like in the top right hand corner, when it's enabled, you have an AI content chat. So if you click on that and you'll see that these are a, a series of questions that have been asked uh, for this, you can type in any question that you would like um, and if it's contained in the document, the AI capability will sh not only answer the question for you uh, relevant to the document, it will also then redirect you to the specific instances that that um, sort of question is referenced. So for us as an organization, our time to resolution uh, from when an employee has questions has been significantly diminished because traditionally we would have had to have answered that phone call took the information took down their email address phone number we'll get back to you once we've researched this and that's maybe an hour or two before we're able to get back to them with this we can triage those questions in real time so we would go into the hub um, and when you have the ai capability enabled it's at a hub level so if you've got a hub for abc company and you've got subfolders or sub hubs of medical dental vision if you're at the hub level using the AI, it will search all of the sub hubs as well. So it's not like you as the user have to find the specific document that references that. You can search from a hub level and it's going to show you exactly where that is to the specific document in all of those subfolders. Um, so, and some of these hubs get pretty large, right? Like we're talking, you know, yeah. 20 docs, 30 docs, you know, hundreds, maybe 500,000 pages so, sometimes. It, Exactly. So if you were looking, uh, at, this is an example of when you're a client of related to inspiration library. So you can think of this as like um, a Canva, but for related to specific. So there's pre-curated documents uh, that you can download as templates to use as the base for your related to presentation. And so here, but sort of exactly the same thing. If I was looking for uh, insurance inspired templates so i would simply type that in and it's going to redirect me to whatever is contained in this 
uh, you mega, know. mega, mega thing. That's great. I actually, that's that's a. I haven't thought of that you would be using it for this, but this is great. I thought you right. already knew everything. This is fantastic. <laughs> Look, this is one of the things we love you on the call. Is you're like you're coming up. You're coming up with things that we thought would be nice in theory, but I think you're making them more applicable. Well, great. I, I apologize for interrupting your flow, but now I think the people have the context for the consumer and the problem that they have. And then they have the context a little bit for why is it important for, you know, a business to create, you know, these types of experiences for either their employees or their customers or their future customers. And you were showing us how, how you onboard people to actually do that. Yep. Person, right. Yeah. So, so essentially, again, you're working from sort of the corporate or your personal profile. And mm -hmm. so I'll now take you through how to very simply create content. So up on the top right hand corner of the screen, you select add new content, it's going to have a drop down list, you can upload your PDF, you can upload different web content, different templates, or you can create a hub. For the purposes of this, we're going to upload a specific content. We're going to browse files. I've got some pre sort of curated samples that I can pull from. So for the purposes of, of this, we'll create an open enrollment presentation. So essentially what's happening in the background here, if you've got web links in the PowerPoint, for example, that you've converted to PDF, the AI is working in the back end to enable those URLs, et cetera, in the presentation. So you don't have to do anything to sort of re-enable some of that content. So that's all happening uh, in the background um, because we're using the internet to do this live. It's taken a little bit longer than normal, uh, but it typically takes, you know, five to 10 seconds for the presentation uh, uh, to appear. Um, and once it, it comes up, you'll be presented with exactly how you want to uh, show your content. So Relator is going to make some suggestions on how, uh, they feel that this specific content would be best viewed, but you also have the ability to select from pre-curated uh, samples. So if we wanted this to be a flipbook, uh, pageless scroll, so like a website, um, and you can also toggle off and toggle on uh, if visitors are allowed to change the view. So where we've used this in the past um, is sort of in sales settings. So in a in a presentation, uh, sort of feel we may want it to be more traditional slide view, but when we're delivering that content or a leave behind to that client, we may feel it may be more beneficial in a pageless scroll. So we can decide on how to uh, present that content to a specific prospect in, in real time, but then also enable them to, to make the change. So we're just going to go ahead and, and use slide view and we'll just save it as a sample. And then this is where you have um, the functionality to change the privacy settings. So again, back to sort of sales. Uh, traditionally, we were handing over, you know, a, a, a binded presentation to those CFOs, HR folks, whatever. They could then turn around and deliver that back to, you know, somebody that we were competing against. Similarly, if we're just emailing over, uh, you know, those presentations, same rules apply. They could just forward it to you know, one of our competitors. So um, depending mm -hmm. on the setting, we may add some privacy uh, to these documents to avoid our intellectual property getting into the hands of, of folks that we wouldn't want to have access to that. And so uh, essentially, once you've selected all that, um, you have sort of edit mode up the top here. So you'll notice that it says, you know, slides two, three, four, etc. So this is just the navigation panel. Um, so essentially, when we're starting, you'll notice that these are sort of red check marked. This means it's added to the navigation. So what I could do here is I can simply change, you know, the name of that. So this one is just going to be content. And so then if this eligibility was related to the content, I could then make that eligibility. And you'll see that I can also nest it. So if I were to change this to a top bar menu, it's now got more of the look and feel of a traditional website. And if I hover over content, I've now got a drop down menu. for eligible. So it enables you to create sort of folder categories, medical, dental, life, disability, 
and then nest in additional information that would fall under those specific categories. So that's the navigation feature. Um, on this slide in particular, doesn't wow anybody particularly, but what I can do is add in a background video. So what you'll notice is on the right hand side, there are specific pre curated background videos that you have access to. So you can find and scroll to figure out which exact one is going to work best for the presentation. So we may set this as the background video and now it's going to underlay uh, sort of in the background behind what we want to present sort of the welcome to open enrollment. So when that person initially signs in, it's unique. Uh, it's something that traditionally they wouldn't have had with a PowerPoint or a PDF. So it's immediately grabbing that viewer's attention. And then so we're, we're really working from pre-curated, you know, set of interactivities. So this is the listing of all of the uh, items that you can use to create that user journey. So if you want to be able to redirect them to a, a, an enrollment portal, for example, and we use this a lot, we can just go in and grab, let's say, a, a logo for a specific company. I'll just use ADP. They can pay us for this free plug later. Um, so that's then going to add in the ADP logo. I can then resize it, drag and drop. And what this enables me to do then is add some specific effects. So if I want to draw a viewer's attention to it, I have you know, a pre-curated list of specific effects that I can now sort of capture the uh, end user's eye. And then if I want to redirect to that specific link, we'll just copy in ADP. So this would be a link for those viewers uh, that use ADP as their enrollment system. to use oh. and we would go click link add the content and now if I go in and you'll have a selection you can open it in the same tab new tab or pop-up window I traditionally open it uh, either in a pop-up window or in the same tab the reason for that once you X out you're back into the presentation if you if you divert them to a new tab they may not get back to the presentation. So that's just a marketing technique uh, that we use to keep these people in, engaged in the presentation. So if I now hit save on that, you'll notice that I've now created some interactivity for the document that that individual can now go through and on this logo, click in, and that's going to take them directly to the ADP site. So traditionally you would have just had you know, in the presentation, go to the ADP site. It's now a way for you to uh, create a presentation that's going to capture everything that they're going to need in order to make those benefits decisions. Um, similarly, you know, uh, plan decision support, we use a tool called Alex by Jellyvision. Instead of me having to drop in a screen grab of their marketing presentation or whatever it is, we would use a YouTube video. And so we would get the uh, Alex educational video from YouTube, drop that in. And I think I have it pre-saved here. I so, need your help solving so, a murder. So this uh, is specifically, you know, meet I Alex. <laughs> so rather than have me have to tell them what Alex is, they can self serve and find out exactly what Alex is. And then we would also use a redirect to, the, to their specific plan support tool. So there's just a ton of functionality uh, from the interactivity that you can create um, to make this a more streamlined and uh, specific presentation for those individuals. We love that you like to partner with organizations and people by the name Alex. So if anybody, if any Alexes are listening to this, you got to go to Tom. He'll he'll take care extra extra well of you. Um, um and, and I know I know we've got a, a sort of specific period of time, but these are just some of the things that we use it for. So like we mentioned at the at the top of the call, 
insurance jargon is complex. And traditionally, if we were using, you know, an open enrollment guide, we would have to list out exactly what the uh, definitions are of these insurance. So what we do here, declutter the page, add in uh, a, a box that we would just blend in. So it looks like the same presentation and then just add a pop on hover. So here we would just put, you know, explain what deductible is. And then, so from a page perspective, it looks uh, and feels uh, uncluttered, appealing, easy on the eye, but there is some content that an employee can engage with if they want to know what a deductible is, what a copay, what an out-of-pocket maximum. And then we can also embed like a downloadable um, uh, white paper that takes them through all of the uh, insurance terms and definitions in an easy to explain manner. So again, enabling these people rather than calling us up or calling HR and saying, can you explain to me what a deductible is? Or they don't have time to listen to the audio where we would explain what it is. They can simply hover and start self-serving their way to education on uh, those specific topics. And that education, Tom, like as you pointed out earlier, that could be a video it could be a web Im immersively embedded web content. It could be text that you write out the way you just did there with some definitions in a pop-up. You know, do you do you find that there's some, you know, some favorites that that you've seen, you know, in, from your customers in terms of what what they're providing or kind of what feedback people are getting, but what 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 of the content or is it the variety that makes the life more spicy? I, I think it is the variety. Um, if you're just using the same interactions over and over again throughout the presentation, there's not that sort of wow factor of um, multiple different ways to engage the consumer. Sort of repetition of that um, becomes stale. So you have to, and you'll find this as you start creating various different templates that certain things work well uh, in certain areas. Um, and that kind of leads to, to sort of a, another point on one of the big reasons that we partnered with Relay to in the first place was the ability to clone these presentations, essentially making a copy. So while we create very broad base level PowerPoint presentations as a starting template, when we upload that, we create all of these immersive sort of experiences and assets in the presentation. When you clone it, all what we've done is preserved. So it's not like we're having to create all of these experiences again from scratch. That was really powerful for us as a you know limited team, limited resource. When we deployed this in Q4 of 2019, our busiest time of the year, we need something that was scalable and repeatable. Um, and so we created those templates uh, with some very generic audio, uh, preventative care is preventative care. It doesn't really differ from group to group. So we were able to replicate these presentations very quickly, where with other tools that we had used previously, we would have to fully customize those. So the cloning feature of this becomes incredibly valuable um, on speed sort of to market um, or speed to client deliverable, um, because you would just simply clone it um, have your template for the, the the different company set up in the same way as the original. You then just swap out the underlying PDF from the presentation and all of that interactivity is still preserved. Um, so it then enables you to deliver that, you know, much quicker um, and, and much easier uh, as we all get busy during sort of the Q4 sort of crunch time. And so what, what I heard you also kind of say in the past that kind of really intrigued us is that because you're doing something that's highly reusable, then it may be worth your while to create, you know, that reusable element to actually invest in it a little bit more, make it more engaging and attractive because it will go to, you know, hundreds of customers, right? And, and you know, tens and thousands of interactions. So there's this sort of, if you think of an average PowerPoint you know, like template, people do invest in the templates because if you have a good template, um, I think it sort of lifts up the overall performance. Same thing ha here can happen with interactivity and this much richer experience. Is that kind of a... 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it depends on the type of content that you want to create. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly for us, from a, you know, open enrollment presentation perspective, you know, we're doing hundreds of those uh, a year. It's worth the investment in having somebody potentially build out the sort of underlying presentation, um, certainly much better than me or I could. Uh, so, so investing there and then spending time on that initial template, either through you get uh, assigned uh, during the onboarding uh, session, a customer success manager um, that can help you sort of with best practices. And um, here's a suggestion on interactivity to use. We also have access to the, you know, internal teams at Relay2. Uh, we're constantly looking in our client folders for ideas, things they're doing well, you know, highlighting things that maybe are new to Relay2. And we'll get into one of those in, in a second, which I'm really excited about that was just launched. Um, but it's sort of collaboration and sharing ideas. You know, have you thought about using this interactivity sort of in this part of the of the presentation? So um, it, it does make sense to invest in a sort of underlying template as sort of the, the base and then at least invest a little bit of time, effort and energy in the first template that you create to solve a specific need. And then, you know, you're easily able to replicate that really, really powerful uh, presentation across multiple different, um, you know, clientele. So it looks like um, you've really spent a, a ton of time and, and sort of sweat equity in creating them uh, a really powerful platform for messaging. Love it. Um, and so I alluded it to it about 30 seconds ago. One of the things that we're really excited about, and this was based upon um, sort of client feedback, is the ability to record video or audio directly into the platform. So traditionally, we would have had to have embedded uh, an mp3 file to capture that audio now you can do it straight from the presentation so you can click here it's going to enable your microphone you click record audio or record video and it's going to directly record from your webcam and then you can just drag and drop wherever uh, that recording or video you would like for it to appear uh, in the related to presentation so for everything that we use it for, we can now use the, the platform capabilities to do that. So that was a big enhancement that was released about a month ago. Um, and we use that a, a, a ton. So all of our open enrollment presentations come with the audio or, or come with the video. Um, what we've had feedback from our clients is they like to use the video um, because it gives them more of a personal connection uh, with the consumer um, versus just having a, you know, a blank, blank voice sort of on the page um, and so that enables them sort of virtually to build I guess rapport and trust with the individuals that are consuming um, because that is something that is lost by not being in person so this is the closest that you're able to replicate that in a virtual setting and the, your clients are still able to jump to the sections that they care about right like so that's sort of like because typically when we think well i could jump around the you know two hour webinar it's like somebody wants yeah. to do this on their yeah. own you know we're not going to go for two hours don't worry <laughs> yeah uh, but you could technically kind of do that but i think what what i hear you say kind of in the first part is that the the user's value ability to jump to the areas that they particularly care about and then once you care about something that's where you want to hear the video introduction or audio or detailed downloadable resources or things like that. Is that kind of what your, what your experience is as well? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So I sort of make the joke all the time when I'm either in a, you know, a webinar or in a, you know, personal setting, you know, if you're that interested, you can listen to me all over again in, you know, the relay to presentation. Um, and, and to your point that the nice thing about it is that the, easy search and functionality for the answer like in a webinar you've got the you know the the recording bar at the bottom that you have to know exactly what minute somebody was speaking specifically you know about dental insurance with this you're simply clicking on the slide number and it's redirecting you to straight to that information um so it, it makes uh you know self-serving time efficiency 
uh, et cetera, very appealing from not only the consumer's perspective, but from us as the educator. Because if we're, if we're doing webinars, you know, traditionally they're going to be, you know, during regular business hours, you've got, you, you've got the inconvenience of having to have everybody um, in a specific place at a specific time to, to listen to that which again impacts sort of business operations no matter what industry of business you're in um but with this for us from a creation perspective we can do it at any point so if i'm handling sort of work traditionally between you know eight and five i can create a presentation over the weekend at night if that's more convenient for me to do it that way versus spending an hour of traditional sort of work hours on a webinar so from from sort of our business perspective it, it allows us to create far more valuable content and enables us to service our clients better because we're not having to potentially spend time on those webinars where we could be answering you know other questions or or other inquiries that are coming up our clients really like the sort of functionality of it the uninterrupted business operations the reach into the additional sort of stakeholders in the decision making process uh, and then more importantly the analytics on the back end where it's not us telling them that we're being more impactful um, than you know shutting down the business operations we can show them like here's how we've traditionally done it you know in person they're collecting a list of all of these employees that you know attended the meetings and then the next year we're pivoting to relay to platform and showing a 30% increase in uh you know volume of attendees that are that are going through the presentation there's no need to go back to the old way because we're now impacting 30% more of your population with education um so we actually have clients that tell us we don't want you to come on site we don't need the webinars just create you know, the audio presentation that you've done in the past. And then we go back and measure it uh, again, look at the analytics and, uh, and was there a drop off in participation this year? Do we need to strategically focus on other, you know, avenues to deliver smartphone enabled? We had 50% of people look at, look at relate to on a smartphone. Well, that's a way that they want to engage in content. So if we're making investments in other tools and resources, that now needs to be smartphone enabled as well. So we're just gaining a ton of uh, intelligence into the populations that we serve, and that helps us uh, strategize about ways to help them moving forward. So basically, you have this laser laser insight into your you know the your clients' clients, so to speak. Yeah, and. <clears throat> I'm curious, you know, what now you had was the benefit of time, right? You were like one of the early, early, early related to users. Thank you, by the way, for trusting us before we had, uh, you know, quite quite as many things figure out. Um, but you, you kind of have seen an evolution, I would imagine, for the last four years, both in terms of the product, but more maybe more in terms of user behavior. And you alluded to COVID a little bit earlier. What are you seeing in general? Like, what's the big shift? um that you know is 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 driving towards adoption of, of, of platforms like this yeah and i would say that the pandemic was the, the biggest one i mean insurance has notoriously been resistant to, to change and sort of resistant to embracing technology unfortunately everybody had to uh at the beginning of, of 2020 so we were very fortunate um to have started this journey at the tail end of 2019 and had everything sort of operational and, and fleshed out by that point, uh, many people were coming to us and saying, we need a virtual presentation platform tomorrow, right? And so they were immediate adopters of, of the platform based upon a business necessity because they weren't able to get messaging uh, to their to the employee base because everybody was home and things were shut down. So sort of the outside environment dictated the sort of new way that uh, insurance um, sort of vertical in particular had to pivot into a, a more virtual environment. And as we've gone through over the last sort of four years, not only has the platform changed with these enhancements as AI technology has really come to the forefront and, you know, video and, and things like that, um, 
you know, we've seen a, a wide reason for people, you know, adopting this technology. Um, so I don't, I think that if you don't have a platform like this today, um, you're kind of doing the, the clientele a little bit of a disservice because um, this is the way that the market is trending. If you look at the huge, you know, insurance carriers and things like that, they're all, you know, have something here. So pandemic sort of kicked this uh, this technology revolution uh, in the insurance business forward uh, exponentially. And and for you, Tom, personally, I think one of the patterns that we obviously see is that like there's always early adopters and kind of people that try new things and are kind of looking for innovation. Your your you know your clients are very fortunate to have you as that kind of uh, as that person but now you're seeing you know more conservative organizations adopt but you've tried a lot of other things you wanted some of the like when we met i remember you were you know you were kind of i tried this before it didn't quite work this and this what what was your kind of lesson from you know experimenting with engaging your audience earlier and you know other than maybe the ai what do you think is the fundamental difference of why this works for you better now than the previous efforts yeah so i'm I'm comfortable sharing we were a very early adopter of brain shark back in 2010 uh when they launched uh, and that was fine um, what we found was i'd use it all the way up until 2019 uh found that the technology hadn't really advanced much in that nine-year period um you know how to record the audio how to upload the documents um for for download uh was very time consuming um, and clunky uh, for us to do that. And it wasn't easily repeatable. You essentially had to recreate the, the presentation from scratch each time that you wanted to do one. Um, so when uh, when I had um, lapsed or, or let go of our sort of uh, brain shark relationship, I had gone and, and used Prezi uh, for a little bit. Same type of uh, issues that I had with that, fully customizable, like I was having to recreate a presentation from scratch each time to add in the audio uh, wasn't particularly easy. And they only had a, a certain set of predetermined templates that you could use. Um, and so we were a, a relatively small agency at, at that point, And we were looking for something that was going to help us scale, uh, provide something new that wasn't uh, in the market. Uh, the market had become stale with those two technologies. There wasn't any differentiation uh, if you were using those, um, but we needed something that was going to be speed to market. And, uh, you know, as a party of a couple of people at, at that point, you know, with, you know, I think we had 30 or 40 clients and probably 75% of those were renewing at the same time, uh, trying to create, you know, 15 to 20 presentations fully customized just wasn't feasible. So we were looking to standardize and replicate at speed and relate to allowed us to do that. Um, and as I say, we grew, you know, uh, our average growth rate has been 60 percent revenue increase year over year. Um, primarily the, the reason that, that people buy us is our communication packages um, that we're able to sort of present that are different to what our competitors are using uh, to try and educate the, the employees. That's great. That's so basically the the content becomes a revenue driver mm -hmm. and kind of the the smart way of delivering it. And the the part that I sort of as I recall this journey, um, I think what what's interesting is you know where you started is not necessarily where you ended up as the primary usage, right? So I remember we we didn't really have hubs as a sophisticated solution, and when you first started working in relate to, you were just creating kind of maybe individual presentations. Uh, kind of like the the one that you you know shared open enrollment, and then we had hubs, and then the flip books, and and you sort of started adding more and more things in there. Like what what kind of do you see in that? Like is is that sort of do you see the evolution that you no longer need like you know a solution for presentation, a solution for flip flip book, a solution for like a a library? You kind of mm -hmm. need to merge it all. Do you still think there is room for you know, purpose build tools that do only one things like guide us a little bit about your experience and what your clients are pulling 
Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. So I call Relay to my Swiss Army knife. It, it basically does everything that I need it to do from a content creation standpoint. And in speaking, if you want us to speak with a French yeah. accent, or, 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, we can do it all. <laughs> and uh, in speaking with the clients, that was one of the big sort of sales points about Relay to, right? They were using, you know, Flip Snack for flip books and they were using, you know, something else for something else. And it just enabled them to bring in sort of one vendor to solve um, all of the sort of outsourced components that, that, that they had. And you know, there's a human capital element to that, right? You've got to know how to use this specific vendor, know how to use this specific vendor, and, and this was, and then try to tie that technology together. Here, you've got to learn one technology uh, and the lift, uh, you know, the sweat equity to, to you know, purchase Relay to to create content is maybe an hour. I mean, you know, I've referenced it. We bought it in Q4 of 2019. I didn't have three weeks to try and learn how to use this thing. I was producing content, you know, within an hour of of having access to, to the link. So um, if I can do it, I've got no technology background, marketing background, communication background. You know, if I can do it, really anybody can do it. And what I think is really indicative about the technology and the power, we've had several clients that we've used relate to as the presentation tool come back to us and say what is that technology and they've actually bought it for their own company for various different uses employee newsletters you know internal external marketing efforts and, and things like that so it, it's uh the, the tool kind of sells itself um uh, in the right hands and it's it's really cool to see that um, other people see the value without us even really having to speak about it um so that was sort of one thing I, I did want to point out um, that even people that we're presenting to like the technology enough to make the investment. And what I will say, because this comes up a lot on the pricing, um, specifically in the insurance vertical, we've had several clients say, we don't have this in the budget right now. Very common, you know, gets towards the end of the year, budget dollars have been spent. What we found is that insurance carriers in states that are allowed to do this give out tech credits. So a lot of our recent clients that we've onboarded have been able to fully fund the platform through the insurance company's tech credits. So they now have a incredibly powerful tool that is a net zero cost to them. Um, so that is something that I, I just wanted to point out as well, that while, you know, in a traditional sense, it would have been a monetary investment um, that budget dollars would have been applied to. We've seen numerous instances where, no, clients don't even have to pay for it anymore. That's brilliant. Well, I think it's very nice to hear you say nice things about relate to, obviously, but I think one, uh, I, I don't think we were quite ready until great, um, great partners, customers, super users appear. So, you know, there's a saying when, when the student is ready, the master appears, uh, <laughs> you are the master and we're the students and, and uh, Tom, I couldn't recommend more highly for any anybody interested in relate to to um, in insurance, but other industries as well. Uh, you know, to work through you know a superstar relate to partner reselling partner like yourself, sort of Meridian um, Software Solutions. Tell us more about you know how you work with clients there, and how how can people you know connect with you, get a hold of you, and you know get get what's beside you know was it now four years of, of, of power usage of relate to yep. uh, experience in, um, in, you know, across the entire journey, right. From customer delivery to marketing, to sales, uh, to other, you know, internal communications. So tell us, tell us about yourself and, and how can people find you and benefit from your expertise? Yep. So feel free to connect with me on, on LinkedIn. Um, email address is TC at meridiansoftwareservices.com. Um, so if you were to become a relay to user, you get access to uh, you know, customer success manager, you get access to relate to academy. Uh, essentially that is sort of bite size, sort of self-training videos about a minute to a minute and a half long um, on every single aspect of relate to embedding videos, downloadable forms, et cetera. You also get access to the inspiration library, which gives you a pre-curated sort of template uh, library that you can pull down. 
support any questions live trainings those types of things all come with the the licensing package so um i i sort of all always say this to every client that we onboard uh we're successful if you're successful because you're going to be a repeat customer so we're going to do sort of whatever it takes to help you uh gain value out of the platform so feel free to connect with me linkedin email we're happy to set up you know demos and things like that to to walk through and talk through your own specific um, potential use cases. Thank you so much, Tom. This was such a treat. And uh, we really, uh, again, couldn't recommend more high, more highly, you know, working with an expert at relate to like Tom, who has, you know, um, experience, who has ear of our team uh, in terms of, you know, knowing what, what's really necessary for customers. As you see, there are some features that we could say are named after Tom. Um, and uh, and the customers on whose behalf he's uh, advocating. Uh, so, Tom, thanks again for being part of the Relate to community and Relate to family. Appreciate that, it. We're going to wrap up our very first uh, episode of Relate to webinars. Um, please do not hesitate to let us know what we could do better um, and learn from this experience. But I, for one, I'm going to make this a required listening for all new and even existing related team members so that we learn from you, Tom. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. And thanks everybody for tuning in.